Are you looking for some great dividend stocks for the month of August? Today I'm going over three of the best dividend stocks for you to keep an eye on this month. All three of them beat their earnings back in July. They have PE values underneath 20, dividend yields above 2%, and their dividend growth rate is around 10%. Let's jump in. And if you're here analyzing stocks to help you on your investing journey, let's jump into the first one. First company I'm going over is Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker symbol TSM. They're the world's largest dedicated chip foundry. They manufacture, package, and sell integrated circuits and other semiconductor devices. Their main products are used in mobile devices, high performance computing, automated electronics, and internet of things markets. From the start of the year, Taiwan Semiconductor has fallen 30.3%. However, within the last 30 days, they have grown 21%. So that brings them to a current share price of $89.77. Currently close to their 52-week low of $73.92. Their current market cap is $446 billion, and they have a 4P value of 14.19. Now, if you're, if you're wondering what PE is, it stands for price to earnings, and that is the current share price of $89 divided by the earnings per share, which is... 6.33 and that'll give you the 14.19. Now Tomon Semiconductor had earnings per share of $1.55, so they beat it by five cents. Also beat their revenue by $580 million, so that was a 36.6% increase. Now looking at their revenue on their income statement, you can see here that year over year, they have been slowly growing their revenue and there's been a spike up this last year from 46 billion to 57 billion. Scrolling down here, we can look at its net income. So this is their profit. Once again, you can see year over year, they have grown their profit, except for in 2019, they had a slight drop from $11.5 billion to $10.7 billion. But overall, they have been growing in a nice pop-up right there. Here, we'll look at the shares outstandings. Right here, you can see that they have or bought back any of their shares. So, so that's a good sign, at least staying stagnant. Over on the cash flow, we'll scroll down here to look at their free cash flow and see if it's growing year over year. Now, how you determine free cash flow is by taking your cash from operations, this line right here, and subtracting your capital expenditures, which is this line right here. And I'll give you your free cash flow. Now, looking here, there was a drop in 2020, and that's understandable with the craziness in 2020. But from 2019, we had $8 billion, and then last year, $9 billion, and this year, $13.3 billion. So they are growing year over year, except for the small little blimp there in 2020. Now, what is important about free cash flow is it allows the company to do five different things. Pay dividends, which as dividend investors, that's what we're here for. Buy back shares, which we can see that Taiwan Semiconductor isn't buying it back into shares. Pay down debt buy acquisitions, and also reinvest back in the company. So looking here at the five-year average of $8.5 billion, let's go see how long it'll take them to pay off their long-term liabilities if they chose to do so. So over on the balance sheet, we'll scroll down right over here to their long-term liabilities. And their long-term liabilities is $28.32 billion. So it'll take Taiwan Semiconductor about three years to pay off all their debt with their average free cash flow. So we did see that, that their revenue has been growing year over year. And looking right here, Seeking Alpha gives them a B minus. So with a ratio of 20, 20%, they're about 38% higher than the rest of their sector. Now, right down here, looking at its long forward long-term growth, Seeking Alpha gives them a grade of A minus with a ratio of 20.15%. That's about 61% higher than the rest of their sector. Looking at its net income growth, Seeking Alpha gives them an a, a plus with ratio of almost 41%. That is about 864% higher than the rest of their sector, which is pretty great. Over on valuations, looking at their PE, Seeking Alpha gives them a grade of B plus, And we already saw that their PE value is 14.19, which is about 24.27% lower than the rest of their sector, which is great. And it's also... 35.73% lower than their five-year average. So that's that's really good as far as compared to their sector. And one more thing to look at here, their PEG. Now, PEG 
is price to earnings divided by long-term growth that we looked at earlier and that value was 24%. So we have the PE value of 14.19 divided by that 24%, which will give you value of 0.59. What you're basically looking for with PEG is for a value of round one. One being that the current share price is a fair value. Anything lower than one could be seen as potentially being undervalued and anything greater than one being seen as the company is overvalued. So having a PEG of 0.59 and that is 60.43% lower than the rest of their sector, which is pretty good right there. Taiwan Semiconductor's dividend yield is 2.06%. And I'll give you an annual dividend of $1.93 with a payout ratio of 7.15%, which is pretty nice that they're only paying 7% 7, uh, 7 of their earnings. That means they have a lot of room to grow. And then for the last five years, they have grown that dividend at a rate of 10.83%. And their dividend growth is a nice one year. Now looking here at analysts' rating, they are considering this as a buy, as well as a nice healthy dividend rating of 80. Next up is Comcast, ticker symbol CMCSA. Comcast is a media and technology company that's worldwide. They have four different segments. First one being cable communications, which includes all their broadband, video, and wireless. You all may be familiar with Xfinity. They have a media segment, which is, includes NBC, Peacock and Telemundo. The third segment is theme parks. One of the biggest is Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. And lastly, they have Sky, which they acquired in 2018. And it's a direct-to-consumer service that is in the UK. For the start of year, they have fallen 24.5%. In the last month, they have fallen 2.12%, largely due to the drop in earnings, which is right here on July 28th, to a current share price of $30.27. And they're very close to their 52-week low, which was $36.58. They have a current market cap of $168 billion and a current PE of 10.68. Talking about earnings, they did beat their earnings by $0.09. And also, they beat their revenue by $3 million, which was a 52 increase. One of the reasons the share price did fall was their failure to add new use, new broadband users. But as for us long-term dividend investors, that's a good sign because now the stock is at a discount. Looking at the revenue, we can see year over year they have been increasing and a nice spike up right here from $104 billion to $120 billion. Scrolling on here to their net income. Looking right here, the last couple of years it's been pretty steady around that $12 billion. We do have a a big spike up in 2018, most likely due to their acquisition of Sky that year. And we have a nice increase along with that spike up in revenue. We have a spike up in net income from 11.7 billion to 14.3 billion. Turn now once more to the shares outstanding. We can see right here that they did issue some shares back in 2020 and they have since then fully bought it back. So year over year, we, we can see that they are buying back shares. Over on their cash flow, just scrolling down here to their free cash flow. And looking here, we can see that they had a slight drop in 2020, but overall they have been growing their cash flow year over year. So I'll bring them to a current average of 13.5 billion. So let's look at their long-term liabilities and see how long it'll take them to pay off that debt. So on the balance sheet, just scrolling down here to their long-term liabilities. Woo. They have $147.9 billion in long-term liabilities. With their average free cash flow, that'll take them about 10 to 11 years. Pretty long time, so that's the one thing you want to keep in mind, that they have a lot of debt, which is not always a bad thing, but you do want to keep that in mind. Now, as far as growth, right here for the revenue growth, Seeking Alpha gives them a grade of C, having a ratio of 5.81%. They're about 26% lower than the rest of their sector. Over down here for the long-term growth, so you can often give them a grade of C with a ratio of 11.79%. That's about almost 2% lower than the rest of their sector. However, with their low revenue growth, they do have a high net income margin. So you can often give them a grade of A- minus with a ratio of 11.54%. That's about 150% higher than the rest of their sector, which is pretty great. Next, for evaluations with a grade of B plus for their PE, with the ratio of 10.63, that is 41.5% lower than the rest of their sector. And also 32.5% uh, lower than their five year average. Right down here for their PEG, Seeking Off gives them a grade of B with a value of 0.9. 
and that is 37% lower than the rest of their sector. Good sign on valuation and probability. As for Comcast dividend, we have a dividend yield of 2.82%. That'll give you an annual payout of $1.08 with a payout ratio of 29.63%. And that'll give you a growth rate for the last five years of 12% and a nice consistent dividend growth for the last two years. So analysts consider Comcast as a buy right now and they have a healthy dividend grade of 85. If you've been finding value in this content so far, let me know by smashing that like button. And also consider subscribing to the channel for more stock analysis. Moving on to the third dividend stock to buy this month, we have Merck and Company, ticker symbol MRK. Merck is the fourth largest pharmaceutical company on the globe and it boasts the third largest research and development budget. It has numerous pharmaceutical products that treat several different conditions ranging from therapeutical areas, cardiometabolics, cancer, and infectious. Speaking of cancer, Ketundra, which is a leader in the immune immune analogy market and is a major component to their overall sales. Now, unlike the previous two that we just looked at, from the start of year, Merck has grown 13.71%. From the last 30 days, they have fallen 4.87%. That'll bring them to a current share price of $87.41. They're above their midpoint in their 52 week range, pretty close to their high of $95.72. They have a current market cap of $221 billion, with a current PE of 10.85. Looking at its revenue, you can see that they have grown year over year with a slight dip in 2020. Overall, a nice increase, especially this last year, about a $10 billion increase. Going on here to their net income, we can see that they have been grown year over year. They had a slight drop here, 2021, but they have made it back to a current, current value of $14.18 billion. Looking here, you can see they did have a slight drop last year, but overall it has been increasing. So they didn't make it back from that 7 billion to 14 billion. Thrown down once again to the shares outstanding. Kind of like with Taiwan Semiconductor, the last couple of years they have not been issuing or buying back any shares. So that, that is a good sign. Over on the cash flow, the scroll down here to the free cash flow. Here they have been growing year over year. Last year with a slight drop in their income state, their net income, there is going to be a slight drop in their free cash flow. But I'll bring to an average of $8.44 billion. So moving on to their balance sheet or compared to the long-term liabilities. So over on their balance sheet, we're gonna scroll down here for the long-term liabilities. They have a total of $43.4 billion. So with their current average free cash flow, that'll be about five years to pay off all their long-term liabilities if they chose to do so. Looking at their growth, right now Seeking Alpha does give them a D plus for their forward growth, having a ratio of six. 0.13%, it's about 55% lower than the rest of their sector. However, looking at their five-year average, that is a 26.5% increase. So they are moving into the right direction. Right on here for their long-term growth, Signal gives them a grade of C with a ratio of 10.95%. It's about 5.3% 5, 5 lower than the rest of their sector. Profitability-wise, Signal gives them an A plus with a ratio of 29% compared to their sector having a negative average of 2.6%. So that is a, a nice plus for Merck. And as far as their valuation, Signoff gives them an A minus for their PE with a value of 10.85. That is 42% lower than the rest of their sector. And their PEG right on here, Signoff also gives it a grade of A minus with a value of 1.08, about 47% lower than the rest of their sector. So that's good. As for dividends, Merck has a dividend yield of 3.16%. That'll give you an annual payout of $2.76 with a payout ratio of 35.45%. And they have a growth rate for the last five years of 8.81%. And they have been growing that dividend consistently for the last 11 years. So analysts consider Merck here as a buy and they have a nice dividend grade of 69. That was up the three stocks to buy this month. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, so always do due diligence before investing in any of these stocks. If you're looking for more dividend stocks to add to your portfolio, check out this latest video of four super safe dividend stocks for you to consider buying. Catch you next video. Peace.